All right, welcome back everyone here at the Unrestrained Podcast. We're here at the Institute of Latino Conservative Studies. Uh, here, really holding down the fort, man. This looks like um, everybody's confused that today is not Monday, it's Tuesday. So you today, it's uh, just myself, Isaac Galvez, uh, and Alfred. Go ahead, Alfred. What's up, everyone? Welcome, welcome. As, as Isaac said, man, we're going to hold up the fort. There's just a lot to talk about, bro. Just yeah. so much stuff to talk about. And, you know, we're just going to do our best. And we're gonna we're gonna rock it, bro. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, you know it's kind of quiet at work today. Um, not sure what's going on. Could be a slowing economy, but I actually had some time to do some uh, read some articles and look some things up with plenty of time. Normally, I come in here like I, was, I mentioned it on the last podcast. I just kind of cram news like fifteen minutes before uh, we even start. But uh, yeah, man, um, we're gonna go ahead and hit it, man. A lot going on. I'm. I mean, how was your weekend? What'd you do, Alfred? It was good, bro. Yeah, you know what? Hey, you you and I know. I mean, once you're married, bro, you know we get this. Uh, we get the honey do list, right? Mm -hmm. And that honey do list is pretty much honey do this. Make sure you do this. Make sure you handle this. And you know, so today, bro, this weekend, we just took care of business. We, uh, you know, we did the yard work. You know how that goes. And so I had some stuff that we needed to yeah. take care of, man. But overall, man, we had a good time, man. We celebrated Memorial Day weekend, giving honor where due, man. We want to thank everybody. If you're a service, a service man, thank you for everything you do. Uh, thank you for your service. And man, we're just blessed to, to, to be in a country where, you know, not only are we uh, free to speak and have these great uh, uh, holidays, get some carne estrada yeah. on the grill and just enjoy freedom, bro. Yeah, man. You know what? Speaking of that, I don't know, that sounds kind of loud. I don't know if that's... Is that you? Yeah, it sounds kind of loud, but I don't know. You're the engineer, not me. Um, you know, one of the things that... I, I do have this peeve, peev though, Alfred. Sure. That it's Memorial Day, not Veterans Day. That's right. That's right? right? So so there, it's, <laughs> people forget it's, it's different. It's Memorial Day. In other words, if you died or yeah. a veteran has passed away, that's who we're honoring. We're not honoring... The veterans, they have their own day. It's veterans. That's day, true. Right. That's but true. yeah, just little semantics. But, you know, I just kind of, I don't know. I don't know what it is about me. But uh, to me, it's like when I see people like, hey, you know, you know, thank you for serving and all this stuff. Dude, it's Memorial Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Hey, you know, somebody once said, bro, it's it's uh, it, it comes down to a uh, uh, making sure that we not not only do we recognize those the fallen. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, I, I think. Um, and you're right. You're right. It's you know it's in it's it's in pretty much honoring those people that that have died, you know that have you know crucified their lives for for this. And you're right, Memorial Day. Yeah, and you know one of the things, Alfred, when when that um that I think is really sad as we're learning more and more about some of the things that have gone on. You know, when we look at things like Ukraine, yeah. um, you know, the situation in Israel. You know, looking back now at the Afghan war, the Iraq war, and, you know, you, you when you start to understand how evil and corrupt our government is here in the United States, um, just specifically, and it's just really sad because I look back and sometimes I wonder, are we, are we the good guys? You know, are we yeah. the good guys out there, you know, um, or are we the bad guys? I mean, you know... Obviously, I'm, I'm speaking of our government. You know, we've been led to believe that, you know, we're out there fighting for freedom um, and for democracy, which, uh, you know, again, we're a constitution <laughs> republic, people. We're, it's Democracies aren't good, so look it up. But, yeah, so we're out there, you know, fighting for freedom. And we've had so many of our men and women that have gone and died. And I just, I just can't help to think that it's really sad because it's questionable if they died for the right reasons, you know, they, you know, it's questionable. And I'm, again, I don't mind that. I don't mean that, um, you know, we have soldiers that went out there and, you know, they, they died for what they believed they were being sent to do. Right. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they, you know, if they were to going to Afghanistan, I was listening to this, um, um, Oh, the podcast with, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the football player, uh, quarterback, quarterback. He was, was with, Rogers. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if you saw that he was on with, uh, um, 
Tucker Carlson. Yeah, yeah. And he was talking the uh, he was talking about uh, the what's his name uh, P- uh, Pittman P- uh, the guy that oh god I'm so bad with names guys. Oh, yeah, uh, he was the general Pittman, to, right? I to, think he... P- P- Tillman, Tillman, the the guy who. Oh, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he. He, he decided. Up, he, he decided to go to the Iraq. It was a Iraq War, I believe. It was the Iraq War. or Afghan. No, he was the Afghan War. He ended up getting killed. That's right. Right. Um, put it in the comments. Sorry, I can't remember. I can't remember the guy's name, but he was talking uh, the story about um, looking back and how, you know, when he got when he got to um, Afghanistan, he was basically standing around just guarding a poppy field. Imagine. Yeah, and I guess he was writing letters home, and he was really frustrated because he was almost kind of like regretting his decision to sacrifice, you know, go because he, you know, this guy, this man had a million dollar contract in the NFL that he basically gave up to serve his country, thinking he was going to go out and do, uh, you know, fight for freedom and liberate people and all the good things, right? They were told, right? Um, but then he finds himself standing around, you know, guarding a poppy field, right? And that interview kind of gets around to kind of alluding to like, you know, did they actually kill him? You know, did the U.S. actually kind of set it up for him to be killed because he was pretty high profile. And I guess he was already writing home kind of a little bit frustrated about his deployment and questioning why they were out there. You know what? It's funny that you mentioned that because Mm -hmm. it's not just that. uh, I don't know. uh, I was listening to the this other podcast from uh, Joe Rogan and David Smith. And I think they were having that same discussion, bro. Like, can it be possible that the U.S. is having these wars? I mean, think about it. Having these wars, the Iraq war, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they said that Saddam, you know, uh, with the intentions that, hey, there's, uh, you know, weapons of mass destruction. Right? right. Which we know aren't there now. It's a fact. Exactly. And now uh, also, you know, now you you, you can, now you jump into the, uh, you know, what happened with Libya, right? Remember uh, the same thing? Uh, there was a there was a a, uh, a whole bunch. Uh, even the guy got killed, or he he was found under under <laughs> under a rock or something. It was like a tunnel, and he got killed. Uh, mm-hmm. And so so now the the thing of this is, it just makes you wonder, and just makes you think the coincidence of how everything plays out, right? How we're in Afghanistan protecting the poppy, you know, like come poppy on, fields, yeah, poppy fields. Like think about it. What I mean, that opioids. What what can you make with that? fentanyl you yeah. know what can you make with that i mean uh think about it for a second man i mean is it is it is it to protect all these plants the opioids that eventually are going to be you know it just makes you think like is this for profit yeah you know whatever reasons it is it's not it's not the reasons why people decided to sign up and list themselves and of go course. out and sacrifice themselves right and so you know i think it's highly likely that we've had a lot of um veterans that have passed away and were basically not there for what they believe they were there to do. And so they've sacrificed their life for a cause that they didn't even know they were a part of. So I think that's highly likely. I think it's, it's really sad. I I was thinking about it because yeah, it's sad, man. You know, some people say that the last real war we've actually had was world war two. Like, I mean, like righteous justifiable wars, right. Was world war two, you know, um honestly i don't know i i mean a lot vietnam i guess people were frustrated i, I kind of get on the fence about vietnam because i do understand like not allowing communism to spread throughout the world mm-hmm. um so i i kind of i kind of get it but you know we've been lied to so many times now that um yeah we just it's 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 just fair to it's fair to say man it's it's sad i mean if you have family out there um, that if you have loved ones that have passed away in, in these wars, you know, man, I'm sorry, you know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel bad. I hope I don't not coming across like the wrong way, but I think it's justifiable because again, we, we know that like, you know, just take Iraq, for example, we know there was no weapons of mass destruction. That's a fact now. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's, that's the reason why we went there. You know, again, Afghanistan. What were you doing in Afghanistan? None of the none of the people on the plane were Afghanis, right? They were Saudis. Exactly. So, you know, we just look back, and I think it's reasonable and highly likely that many many Americans died and passed um, for a cause that none of us agreed with, right? Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, I just wanted to throw out there that w- this wasn't planned, no, bro. Not at all. But, <laughs> but but you know what? It's like you said. You said this before. Where hey, it's always good to have a uh, healthy distrust. A healthy distrust of your government, right? Yep. Not only because of stuff that we're you know. Come on now. I mean, we just we just spend uh, what was it? Two two years being uh, uh, patronized. You know, uh, this was the uh, what do they call it? The pan- the the pandemic of the unvaccinated. Yeah. I mean, think about it. We literally had CNN, MSNBC screaming in the top, top of their lungs saying how because of people who are unvaccinated, you know, this is this is the reason why we're in this situation. And now and now we have AstraZeneca pulling out all these uh, vaccines. Right. And nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody, you know, nobody wants to question the issues about yeah. dying suddenly. Right. And it's like, OK, like, hey, and now you're having these discussions. Joe Rogan, finally, bro, finally people are having these discussions where, you know, like, come on now, like, was this intent? Was this for profit? I mean, they don't want you to question. They don't want you to say anything. Yeah. They don't want, you know, they just want you to, you know, continue with that dumb narrative. You know, who's making money? Yeah. I mean, again, again yeah, it just goes to show if, 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 you know, COVID exposed a lot, right? And a lot of people are... I mean, I just wonder, man, you know, I was, I was at the, I went, I had to go get labs done today and it turned out to be a waste of time because my appointment expired. I was supposed to go months ago, but I kept, <laughs> I kept procrastinating, but I'm like, I'll just go show up. They'll, they'll do it. But it's just crazy to see how many people still wear masks, man. Bro. And it's like, oh, man, and, you know. But, but bro, but you know who's, but you know who's, who, you know who, I mean, I got to give this to uh, uh, Spanish media, bro. Telemundo Univision, yeah. bro. They're fear mongering our people. Yeah. And mostly the people, if you look around you, the people that have the actual mask is people that, you know, Latino, Vietnamese, you know, uh, Chinese, you know, people that, you know. Yeah, that, it's hard to tell with the Asians because they've always, they've always worn masks, right? Yeah. So it's hard to tell like, hey, are they wearing it just because of COVID or they were just, you know, they were, they were already kind of ahead of the time. Um, um, but yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's funny you say it because Alfred, the two <laughs> ladies that were in front of me in line were like two older Latina ladies, yeah, like an older woman, and and I don't know, she was with a another woman who was maybe like in her late fifties, and the other lady was probably like in her late sixties to mid seventies, and they were all worried because you know they didn't bring mask and oh, and they're just I can hear I could just overhear them talking, and as soon as they got to the to the check in, they got their little mask. And it's just kind of stupid. It's just, it's so stupid because this whole time you've been in line with a bunch of people with no mask on. Right. So now you're in front, like, I, it just, it's just logic, man. You know, there's just no common sense. So, you know, you, you've been, you were just, you've been in around a bunch of people the whole time. So, you know, if you were going to get sick, I mean, we already know the masks don't do anything. I mean, this is a fact, people. That, um, it's a fact, That's right. right? The particles are smaller than, than the, the meshing on the mask itself. That's right. Right. So it, it's like wearing nothing. It's not doing anything. Um, but anyways, I digress. Um, yeah, it's just, you look at those ladies and you're like, yeah, these women, oh, man, you get so tempted to say something, you know, I, mean- <laughs> I got so tempted to just like, ma'am, do you know, this is not going to help you. Like in a nice way, but I'm just like, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter, man. Let these people. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're just going to be like, man, it's good. I mean, you're just going to be like, you're talking to a wall. People, you know, people are going to tend to do. Not only the, are you being depraved from the oxygen, right? Because yeah. it's a known fact. But, bro, just think about all the dirtiness. The, what, yeah. You know, the, all carbon, the... the carbon, uh, you know, monoxide is get, just getting stuck there. The, you know, just the, 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 the you know, the whatever germs. Just the bacteria from your own mouth. Yes. Yes. That's sitting there. You're not worried about that? You know? All the slobber up in there? Like, it's just, it's just not, it's just not even natural. Like, what do you think to yourself about there's got to be, you're, yeah, it's just, you're blocking your airways. That's true. But the, but how do you explain to these people, man? How do you explain to these people? I don't I mean, know, man. I wish I could just tell them, hey, turn off the TV. You know what I mean? Just turn off your television. Because at the end of the day, that is what's keeping you, you know, pretty much uh, scared. Yeah, you know? the thing with these people have been indoctrinated, and it's too late. 
That's true. And I look at these people, and I know people are going to probably think that this is pretty ridiculous, but it's really not. These are the people that you can convince about a lot of things. I mean, you've yeah. convinced them to block their own breathing pathways. Mm -hmm. What can you not convince them of at this point? You know what I mean? I mean, you convince them to vaccinate. Yeah, you, you've convinced people. Yeah, right. <laughs> you've convinced people to block their airways and you convince them to take a untested medical substance and put it in your body that you can't take that back. Wow. Right? Yeah. And so what can you not convince them of? You could convince them that, uh, you know, the Jews are evil. Bro. You could convince them that uh, Latinos are monkeys. Fact. You know, I mean, yeah. to me, like, when I look at these people that have fallen for this, it's they're easily programmable, you know, right. for lack of a better term. So, yeah, I didn't intend to get too far into this, but but <laughs> it's just somehow we ended up here, man. Hey, but, yeah, hey. I, I Hey, that's that's the way the road takes us, bro. Yeah, man. Wherever the road takes us, man. And bro, in other in, in other news, bro. Let's, yeah. let's, I mean, I love it because guess what, bro? I, I, the same the same thing that you're think, thinking about, bro. Uh, bro, I hate it. I'm driving. I'm going. To, I'm going. I'm going to my work, right? I, I'm going to the freeway. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, dude, I'm you know I'm doing good. I'm listening to a podcast. I I turn to the, my right, right. I'm gonna get into the other lane, and as soon as I turn into the the other lane. I noticed somebody driving by it's by themselves uh -huh. with a mask. And I'm like, what the Bro, hell? bro. Okay. I was trying to get off this, Alfred, <laughs> but now you're going to keep it going. Go if you When COVID was going on, there was a guy on a motorcycle, bro. Golly. Okay. Yeah. And let's say, like you said, two people driving by themselves in the car with the mask. There's nobody else in there. Your windows are up. You know, there was guy a guy on a motorcycle with the helmet and he had his shield up and he had his mask on. Bro, like, it's it's just the uh, Alfred. I we're, I was trying to move on. <laughs> well, but we because we could keep going on this. But you know, it will be relevant because we are going to talk to some, about something. Uh, one of the things we're bringing up, but a little bit of I told you so, I guess. But yeah, I don't I don't remember what, what our first story is. What do we got, Alfred? Yeah, so we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna jump right into it because man, this is it. Remember, we were talking about this 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 lines up perfectly with what we've been talking about with these masks. Okay. Right? Initially, I don't know if you guys remember, about three years ago, up in New Jersey, right? Oh, yes. In New Jersey. I didn't know we were doing this one yet, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So in New Jersey, pretty much, you know, there, there was a, you know, there was a huge uproar. And it was in the news, right, about a gym owner, you know, and he pretty much wanted, you know, like to keep his, you know, he wanted to keep his, his, his business open, you know, throughout this whole thing. And he got just pretty much, you know, he was getting left and right. He was just... Coming, you know, just just getting uh, bombarded, bro, with the you know the city officials coming after him, uh, one thing after another. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now, uh, you know, after four years, bro, uh, I'm sure he was put through hell. Think about it. Not only did he get all these citations right from the city, yeah, uh, uh, an outrageous amount of money, right, that that the city was trying to rank out on him because he was not complying, right? This was the time where nobody knew what was going on. And you can blame ignorance and you can say whatever, but now that we have actual data, now we know what's yeah. going on, you know, he pretty much just said, laid it out and he just took him to court. He sued, the, he sued, I think he sued the city and he actually won. And he won and now he's giving his... Well, I, I don't... Wait, hold on, Alfred. I don't think he actually sued the city. Was it the city or was it the... No, no. What it, what it is is that he was push fighting back against the closures, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, li we'll listen to the short video. We'll, I don't think we want to play the whole thing, Alfred. We might want to cut it. Mm -hmm. But like Alfred said, if you guys remember back, this was when, when all these shutdown mandates were coming across. And it was big news because they were, I believe, the first one, first business that came out and they were a gym and they refused to shut down. Right. Okay, and they they refused to shut down. Uh, I remember the story well because they actually um, they got creative, man. I forgot I forgot what they did, but they you know they 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 called themselves a, like a club or something like that. Yeah, that's right. Right, and so they kind of changed the way they operated so that they wouldn't be able they wouldn't be able to be shut down legally. That's true. But um, that, that's not the important part. But they were making a constitutional argument that the government had no authority to shut down their business. They ended up being right, okay? And I remember during the time, even the police officers were going down to the gym. They actually started signing up to go to that gym because it was the only gym that was open. Mm -hmm. So law enforcement actually 
uh, started going to that gym during that time, even even when they were trying to shut him down. So we'll play the clip real quick, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit more. Hopefully, you all remember this. But uh, yeah, they've been they've been vindicated. It's not over yet, but let's go ahead and play the story real quick. Let's do it. All just to lead to pushing an experimental jab, huh? I vaguely recall that. Yeah. Um, can you tell I still have some animosity towards that? Yeah, I'm never forgiving them. So you may recall there were certain business owners during that time period who were like, yes, yeah, screw you. We're defying all of your unconstitutional orders. And there was, I mean, they went through hell, a lot of them. And one of them is joining me today with some good news. I want to welcome to the show Ian Smith. He is a former New Jersey gym owner who was targeted by local officials for not following New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy's orders to close his gym. And Ian, welcome to the show. You just had a huge legal victory stemming from that battle. Yes, well, uh, I am here to share some good news. And thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, so I want to get to the uh, the good news, but I want you to first take me back to take me back to 2020 here. Okay, you were you you were charged with what like over 80 charges um, for violating these public health rules. And did did police ever? I know you kept your gym open. Did police ever arrest anyone like gym goers or you guys or what? How, how did that play out? All of the above. Um, so the municipal citations spanned over two years. We got a whole bunch of them within the first couple of weeks of opening up. And then they sort of stopped for a little while. And then we got some more and then we got some more. And those tickets are all municipal citations ranging from violation of a governor's orders to public nuisance, um, zoning violations, and a couple other sort of miscellaneous arbitrary citations that were sort of just thrown at us really to scare us into shutting down. And when that didn't work, Governor Murphy took those municipal charges as well as a health, deport, uh, health department shutdown order and went before a judge. Uh, in, in New Jersey, we have appointed judges, not elected. So he went, mm -hmm. he went in front of his judge and he asked for a court order to close our business. And then that's where a lot of the really tangible, very scary punishments came in. We were being fined $15,497.76 per day for every day that we were in operation. The state took upwards of $200,000 from our bank account. We had members arrested. Uh, we had one member arrested. My former co-partner and I were arrested. We had our doors forcibly locked by the sheriff's department. Uh, when we refused to comply with that, they came to lock the doors again, and we took them off the hinges and stayed inside for protests. Goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, go for it. Go for it. Sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, guys, um, uh, he goes on to talk about they've spent uh, close to a million dollars in uh, to fight this. Right. So the next step is that they are going to go after trying to get um, some of this re re recuperated. But what essentially what happened was that the judge that was appointed, um, they were they were giving the the state uh, time to provide evidence um, for their claims and their accusations, and the state wasn't re really responding. Basically, so it got to the point where the judge like, okay, I can't keep I can't keep letting these guys keep going through this. So he just basically dropped all the charges, right? So they had like 80 counts. And and when you go back and listen to what he was saying, um, they were getting hit with like stupid little things initially, right? Like, um, I think what was something like, um, you know, it was like, it wasn't, oh, I'm trying to remember what some of the stuff he had on there. Like he was saying they were getting hit with like, like, I don't know, like code violations and little, little things that had nothing to do with healthcare or. Well, he, well they were getting hit with both. So no, I yeah, after, but initially they were just getting stupid oh, yeah, little yeah, citations. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, little yeah. little just nitpicky stuff just to scare them away. And then finally they took, you know, once they took it to court, um, then that's where things got a little bit more serious for them. But the point being here that not, not when you think about it, I want to know um, how many people died as a result of them being open? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Because, I mean, because let's remember, guys, it was, it was. Oh my gosh, these evil people! People are going to die. I mean, it, it, this was a big deal, right? This was to save lives, supposedly. Okay, 
So where are the reports that are going to show us examples of these, let's just say this guy right here, that stayed open the whole time, right? And did not obey the orders and was putting people's life in jeopardy, supposedly. How many people died as a result of that gym being opened? I, I'm sure it's not significant because if it was, it would have been all over CNN. Exactly. Right? Exactly. If those numbers exist, which they would have traced them back. Remember, they were doing, they were tracing all this stuff at some point. Well, of course. And the thing is this, uh, you know, I mean, now that we, after the fact, think about it, after the fact, right? It's yeah. kind of like, they already, bro, man, I mean, I, I get I get upset because after after the fact, when we start looking at all this, remember there was a big old thing with uh, with Fauci and, uh, and Ron Paul, right? Yeah. Saying that they weren't doing a, a gain of function, right? Right. And afterwards, they find out that they were doing gain of function. So, so think about it. Line of Congress, right? Doing all these things. They probably already knew, bro. They probably already knew that that's why it's, uh, I'm always, and again, by all means, I know people are going to say, hey, well, I have family members that died of COVID. I do too. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's probably people that die of the flu. Exactly. So I, I, I have, I mean, to me, to right now at this point, I don't know if this was done for profit and they can call it whatever they can just yeah. to get extra money because we know now we know that hospitals were getting my extra money. Yes. They reported them to be COVID. Okay? Yes, they were getting they were getting subsidized for COVID patients if they were put on a ventilator. I don't remember what the dollar amount, but it was a pretty significant amount of cash that they would get. And and so <laughs> excuse me. So, you know, think of you know, it just it's just logical, guys. I mean, you we heard these stories of people that were being put on ventilators that um I mean <sighs> I, I know, I know there were one of the first stories that had come out. If there was a, one of the first few cases was a, a, a boat. If you guys remember where there was people on the cruise and I believe they were in Europe mm -hmm. and they were, that was like, they, they got infected and those people, there was an old couple and the, one of the men, he was on the news. He, uh, the elderly man was, was, uh, put in the hospital. He had COVID. He was having trouble breathing but he refused to put himself on a ventilator because he came from the, he, he was in the medical field. So he knew what happens once you get put on a ventilator, it's very difficult for you to get off of it. So he refused to do it. Cause to him, he understood that's basically a death sentence. Right. So he, he just started doing breathing exercises to keep himself breathing. So he wouldn't have to be put on a ventilator and he actually got better. They weren't able, they didn't have to do it, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's not unreasonable to think that the hospitals have were incentivized to put people on ventilators, even if they probably didn't need it. Right. So that's so to my point, the reason why I bring this yeah. up is because, listen, during that time, you know, there was a lot of people. And again, I could come back and say, well, Alfred, you know, or, or well, you know, Isaac, you know, at that particular time uh, moment, we didn't know what we were facing. We didn't know. Yeah, you, right. you, you could have known. We never known. But at the end of the day, everybody has a choice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, for example, I had a choice to to get one, two, three, three, triple vaccines if i wanted to I, I i should be entitled to my choice you know what i mean like yeah. i should be allowed to uh, decide and then at the end of the day and then after nowadays now you can say well now they're saying well you know that's going to be with you know a decision between you and your doctor right i mean why didn't that why wasn't yeah. that offered to us during the think about it i was one of those employees that had to be every week tested you know what i mean like every week tested like really live for a whole year because again, I did not want to. I, I I needed more information. I'm not looking at uh, I'm not looking at CNN, MSNBC, Telemundo, Univision to to look at these numbers, the dying numbers of people dying. I'm not looking at that. Yeah. I'm looking at my life. You know, I gotta I gotta pay the rent. I gotta take care of my family. I gotta live. You know what I mean? I gotta look at the alternative medicine. Why? How come there is no alternative medicine? Medicine. Now you have you know. Uh, Chris Cuomo going uh, into this uh, podcast and saying after he shamed so many people yep. from taking ivermectin and shaming even Joe Rogan, yep. right? And now you have him saying, oh, you know, I, I took some of that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I yeah. took some of that ivermectin. You know what I mean? Yeah, we've been redeemed, guys. So, we, <laughs> you know, all, if you're listening to this podcast and you're 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 like, oh, every every excuse, you're like, oh, well, the, well, the, well, the, well, the vaccine is what made us get better. No, because the they've already come out and said the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a fact. 
That's not, that's not even a speculation. The vaccine does not prevent you from getting COVID. So you can't say that the only reason more people didn't die was because the vaccine came out. That's not true, right? Then you had cases where people would come out and say, oh, you know, yeah, they got COVID, but they would have been worse right. if they didn't get the vaccine. Well, how do, how, do you, how do you prove that? Because you didn't do any studies, right? right? People don't think about the fact that it was actually normal for you to get COVID and not be that sick. That, that was the normal. That was, that was basically the majority of people. Majority of people... You know, you got you got COVID. What's something going on with the Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, fixing, okay. I'm fixing your brother. Yeah, the majority of people, you know, they got COVID and they didn't get that sick. That was the norm, right? So then how can how can you say that, you know, make statements like, hey, if they hadn't gotten COVID, they would they'd be worse. 100%. How, how how do you how do you prove that? Because it you know, it's not like the majority of people we're getting very sick and going to the hospital and being put on ventilators. And all of a sudden now the, the, the vaccine comes out and now you have less people going to the hospital that did, that didn't take place. Right. Right. Well, you see, it's, well, what, and see, that's, that's what, that's the reason why I'm bringing this up, bro, because yeah. a lot of the, you know, a lot of the people, I mean, a lot of the media and even people that are, were vaccinated, right. Mm -hmm. More power to you. Right. Now you're starting to see, you know, things that, uh, uh, some of the things that we're we're seeing now, for example, about n now the studies about natural immunity, right? How natural immunity is a much better was a much better uh, 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 what do you call it? A much better take. Well, it's a yeah, it's a better remedy for you to not prevent you from getting it again. Exactly. Yeah, because your immune system is going to do what it's supposed to do, which is to develop immune immunity to to the the virus, right? And it's it's going to fight it back. Of course. Right. But see, but that's not, but it's, that was not the narrative at the time where all this thing hit the fan. Yeah. You know, what was it? The first option was instead of looking up other alternative yeah. medicine, what did they do? Vaccine. Yeah. You guys got to And all those doctors out. that were banned telling people that, you know, that, that, that naturally that their immune system would adapt and it is as different as the virus would then uh, mutate mm -hmm. that then our immune system, you would get sick, but you would get less symptoms and it wouldn't be as severe, right? That's what they were saying. And that's actually what happened. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. We couldn't look back now and say, that's exactly what happened. Okay. <laughs> so right now, I mean, you know, wherever, wherever, all those people, they were, if you're somebody who still is listening to this, like, oh, these guys are idiots. And you listened to your source that was right. telling you everybody was going to die. And that, you know, this thing was super dangerous and it didn't turn out to be that way. The, the same news network that told you that the vaccine actually prevents you from getting the vaccine and then getting the virus. And then it didn't, um, they were wrong again. I mean, at what point do you, do you start questioning your sources, man? Because <laughs> the reason I don't question my sources, cause they keep, you keep getting right every time. Exactly. Right. Every, every time. And. So the point being is we look at this, this case now in New Jersey, now we're watching this is 2024. You know, we followed this case in 2020. Right. And we, you know, back then they were saying it was unconstitutional and what the government was doing had no authority to do it. And right. it turns out they were right. And unfortunately all these businesses had, they followed suit. Right. And not, and refused to open the government wouldn't have gotten away with all the stuff they did. You know, right, and, right. and people, you know, hopefully this is a lesson for, I know it's, it's hard, you know, if you have a business and you have the government bringing it on your neck, but guy, guys, I don't understand. I mean, especially get, you know, the, getting the, the whole vaccine. I mean, for me, um, you know, I, I refuse to get it. And if my job at the time, my job at the time, I actually left my job because, of, because they were, when we got back, mm -hmm. uh, the company I was looking for was forcing us to wear masks. I'm like, I ain't doing this. I, I left, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Um, I was willing, I was willing to lose everything, you know, you know, my wife worked for the, 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 um, she worked for the health department, right? My okay. Kid. And they mandated it and she refused to get it. Mm -hmm. And now everybody that works in her office, that got the vaccine regrets it. How many people do you know that regret not getting the vaccine? That's right. Oh, bro. I mean, right? have you heard somebody say, man, I wish I would have got it. Not, not only that, Isaac. Okay. Not only that. And again, I well, haven't met one. You you probably only met one, right? But no. what I'm saying, the other the other option, bro, is is, bro, I am hearing these horrible stories about people having myocarditis, 
right? Or issues with their heart. Yeah. You know, I have a family member that, you know, that's that's struggling with heart issues. Never had any problems. Yeah, right? I mean, they're already saying that cancer diagnosis is up 300%. Can you and, imagine? And, and this is all post-COVID. So, I mean, is again, the conspiracy theorists, people that were getting counseled were t warning people of these things that, that it would lead to increase in cancer, that you would lead to, um, to sterile, you know, to, yeah, lower sperm counts in men and, and inf inf uh, infertility issues, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or fertility issues with, with less, rep I mean, all of these things have been proven. Well, I don't want to say proven true, but seem to be true because, you know, you have reports. I mean, reports of fertility clinics talking about increase in, 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 in cases with people coming in with fertility issues after after the vaccine came out right so i mean again all these doctors that were canceled it, i mean it seems like it seems like they were right right you know so uh, you know the, the, the in, in aside from that now we we go business wise how many companies shut down because of it wow. i mean thank god these guys stayed up they, their business probably wouldn't have survived a lot of gyms didn't survive well, think, well, yeah, of course. Well, even think about all the current businesses that are actually closing as well because of that particular situation. Not only right. not only were they closed, you know, they, they were forced to pay, you know, some of their employees without making profits during that time. Think about it. Come on now. You can't, you can't go three years from now or three years ago where they were lining us up, right? Two, three people per, you know, two, you know, one, uh, now think about another the other conspiracy now they got the studies to show that actually the six feet rule you know yeah. like the six feet distance. yeah yeah there's this. <laughs> Man, bro. i mean i mean what else bro i mean we're laughing i mean i'm laughing about this right now because i, I bro i mean think about it i mean you you're you're uh not only uh you know i'm not allowing people to come into your store because you know you're being forced to to, you know, to have these safe yeah. distances where you're limiting, you know, certain people to say, nah, I'm not going to go, bro. If, if I'm going to be stuck three, four hours in the store, yeah. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do I'm not. It's not yeah. that serious. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're all the dead people in the <laughs> states that didn't shut down. Exactly. You know? Yeah. The states where they didn't shut down and have all the shutdowns like we had in California. Where, where's, where's, where's the cases of their dead, you know? Because remember, <laughs> again, it. Guy, it, it, I hope if you're somebody that that was that afraid, how do you not look back and just look at the evidence in the, in front of you? You know, if you lived here in California, you were told seven days to slow the spread. They shut it's everything it's, down. Did it? Did it? Did you really believe that did anything? Because you have the examples of states where they didn't do any of these things. Well, just to put you in perspective, it's been 15 days to stop the per the spread. It's been already four years. And they haven't even came came out and said, hey, we're not going to do that anymore. They're never going to come back and say they were wrong. <laughs> they never do. Right? I right? mean, they never do. They're never going to come back and yeah. say, and say, hey, guys, uh, you know, the 15 days to stop the spread, I think we're past it. You know what I mean? We're, we're good. Four years, I think is, we're good. But guess what? I mean, I hear conversations about unlimited power. Let's do this. Now we're, you know, we're having these discussions about... Uh, you know, giving the president unlimited power for now they're focused on the next next big thing, which is the green, you know, the the green. Uh, uh, what is it called? The um, what is it called? The uh, uh, environmental catastrophes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like now we're jumping to something where burn. I mean, yeah. we're, we're seeing the burns. And, you know, now we've heard I've heard this to the grapevine where we have a conversation where they're trying to give that unlimited power to the president for our, our uh, I am uh, environmental disasters like come on now where what are we what are we well living? yeah i mean the same taking? people that scared you about COVID are the same people scaring you about climate change 100 percent. you know so yeah. i mean they, they their lies don't end in, in everything it's the same people that are lying to us telling us that we need to send money to ukraine are the same people who lied to you about COVID and are lying to you about about global warming Bro, you know? it's it's sad. It's almost like a huge cast, bro. It's like a huge actor. You know, like this is the actor. I mean, we know who Zelensky is. We know who these people are, right? Actors, right? Yep. But but, bro, people people still eat it. You know, people still are wearing masks, right? Remember the hospital where you went at? Yeah. You know, the ladies. There's they're still they're still falling into that false you know narrative that you know we're 
you know, we 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 could potentially be next. Yeah, you know, it's crazy to me, man. I I just think to myself, at what point <laughs> do you? I mean, for me, if you know, I rather live without a mask if I knew, even if it was that bad. Right. Honestly, if it was that bad, where it was really that serious, why would I want to live in a world like that? I'd rather just roll, roll, take my chances, man. If I go, I go. Right. I don't want to be here. I mean, think, or even. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to be here if I have to wear a mask all the time. Right. That's not how I want to live. Or even, or even put yourself in a predicament where you, you know, you get the the picatito Santos, and then look at what's going on now. Now you have issues, right? Like, uh, you know, like <laughs> uh, Chris Como said that he, you know, he was injured, or somehow he said he. He suffered something, a uh, side effect. Right? Oh, he's like got he, side effects? Yeah, he says he's he got side effects. But mm. think about it. And now we are starting to see a report that at um, for certain, uh, for some certain, va- well, for the vaccine, mm-hmm. there's an 11% chance of side effect. That's really high, bro. That's super high. Yeah. You know, 11% that you're going to get a side effect. Bro, come on. At, the, at what point did we, where was the data presented to our government to say, hey, yeah. bro, you know, it could be above 33%, that, you know, 33, 50% that can get myocarditis, yeah. 60 or 80% that can get cancer. You know, come on now. Come on. I mean, look look, look at it this point now. Uh, just over a couple of weeks, we just saw that AstraZeneca is no longer going to do the, you know, the the, the jab because they, they say that demand is no longer there. Oh, really? Yeah, supposedly. Good. But think about it. You know, they, they still haven't really looked into their, I mean, I mean, everything that they do is always right now with the purpose, right? Yeah. They're trying to sh- quiet everything down because now they know that a lot of people are just, uh, they're, they're awake. They're, they're starting to see this no longer needed. Right. But besides the point, think about all the injuries, you know, like what's going to happen with all these people. I mean, yeah, we got the bears, right. With the high amount of, of people that, that God, uh, injuries from from these uh, vaccines, but what are they going to do about it? Nothing, because they had immunity. See, and this is where Trump screwed up, and he won't fess up, right? Right. Remember, he's the he's the one who granted him immunity. You know, the whole uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, um, what was it called? Uh, it was uh, uh, the the you know. Well, the war speed. It was through the no to speed up the vaccine. It was yeah. called uh, Operation um, War Speed, right? Warp Speed. War Speed. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, so tr- Trump, that was that was that was Trump. Yeah, see, that's that's yeah. you know, yeah, facts. That's so facts, I mean, <laughs> and and to me, and to me, you know, again, so he guys can see, we don't just pick on Democrats. Um, you know, you could you can maybe make give the pass to Trump to say that you know he didn't know how bad it was. He ha- he was trusting people around him, and I could buy that, and I and I actually do believe that because, mm-hmm. but my issue is, you know, he why. He should come back and say, I, I'm sorry. He should. I screwed up. Right. You know, he's not. And that's the problem that I have. So I, I can believe that he didn't know any better because he's not a doctor. See, and that's the thing that you, even as a as the, a leader, you know, unless you're a doctor, when it comes to medical things, you don't mess around with that. Right. That's true. So. So I can see how you're you're going to really rely on the medical experts that well, you yeah, have around but, you. Yeah, but when you have to Fauci, make a decision. But when you have Fauci, well, yeah, but he not. didn't. Yeah, he didn't. I don't think. I mean, none of us knew he was that wild. Well, but, uh, I mean, when we, I didn't know who Fauci was. Well, of course not. But you have birds. You got Fauci. Remember, uh, Doctor Atlas? They booed him out, and he was the only. The, I can consider the only doctor that could uh, that he was there striving to speak facts and say no, guys, no, guys. You know, yeah. like Doctor Atlas. All of a sudden, he disappeared. Nobody knows where he's at. So we we got with uh, Burks and uh, and 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 uh, Fauci, and and look what happened. You yeah. Know? So my point Not is, after, I, right? I yeah, I, I can I can forgive him for you know and understand, of course, that you know he had to rely on the expert. But you know, at some point, you figured out that they were you were getting used and that you made a big mistake. At this point, it's pretty clear he made a big mistake. And so my problem with Trump is that he won't come out and actually say, you know, I screwed up. It would make me feel so much better about his next, next administration if he gets one, um, if he actually came out and said something like that and just said, I made a mistake. I didn't realize, you know, because you've heard, I've heard his son in interviews. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, the son. Uh, uh, is it uh, Don Jr.? Don, Don Jr. God, mm-hmm. funny, I forgot his name. It's the same name, Jr. <laughs> um, 
that's how bad I am with names, but yeah, Don Jr. That that's usually his response to that question. Every time I've heard him interview and they, he's get asked that question, um, his response is, you know, they didn't real they didn't realize how bad these guys were, right? And they didn't understand how evil that the the people in in Washington were. Um, but okay, I and I understand that, right? And I can understand and I can appreciate it. But at this point now you do, so I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for a statement from Trump or a response from Trump at some point saying he's sorry. You know, I, I messed up. You don't even have to say you're sorry. Just explain to us what happened and how now you realize that, yeah, there's these guys can't be trusted. And on your next term, you know better now, right? Um, you know better now. You, you've, you've learned from your first go around and you figured out who friend from foe and you know, you're going to do a better job next time because uh, his next term, uh, there'll, there'll be no excuse. But unfortunately, you know, we won't be able to hold him accountable anyways. I mean, it's his last term. So, you know, he, he he's going to be, he, he's not, he's just going to do what he wants to do. Right. True. So that that's what I'm saying. But that's true. That's true, man. Hey, uh, I, I mean, talking about uh, bad, <laughs> Bad choices, and I think it's something that we've been we've been discussing here, man. It's uh, it's it's the situation at the border, right? I think we all know what is happening at the border. We already know that this is causing an open border. Just you know, it just causes a lot of issues. You know what I mean? Nowadays, we're gonna talk about this because this is something that's 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 happening with, you know, the sex the sex trafficking rings that are being that are being popping every in every city, bro. So right now we have we have this uh, this report in regards to uh, Baton Rouge in Louisiana. I guess they found a ring, bro, of yep. uh, you know sex trafficking, you know women that are being trafficked, you know that are being you know uh, smuggled through the through the uh, border. Yep. And and bro, it's something that we told been, you so exactly right. We we've been saying this like, hey, come on now, you open it right, you you leave you leave your borders wide open. Guess who's gonna Who's going to come in and take over these organizations that are going to be, you know, doing their thing, right? This is what they do. Right. And now they're bringing it over here. And now we're setting shop here in the good United States. And, you know, this is what's happening. So you want to look at this video? Yeah, man. Play it. Let's play this. Play, video. play the receipts. Play the receipts. Here we go. Yep. Here we go. Ready for a holiday weekend. Here's something to keep an eye out for. We're learning disturbing new details of a possible smuggling and sex trafficking operation stretching across the border to multiple states, including right here in our own backyard. Miranda Thomas is here to break down what you need to know. Miranda. Are working to dismantle what they call a dangerous gang from Venezuela. Now, they say it's sneaking women into the U.S., including some victims taken right here to Baton Rouge. Oftentimes we'll see victims that are brought in from other states and other countries and they can't articulate to us how they got here, how long they're staying here, where they're going to lay their head at night. And so things like that are things that are often red flags for us. Federal agents are explaining how easy it is for human trafficking rings to operate right under our noses, including one the federal prosecutors say operated here at this apartment complex on South Harrells Ferry Road. So different things that we typically see is someone who may not have control of their identification documents, or they may be malnourished or they may not be able to articulate their travel plans. This newly filed federal complaint reveals women were smuggled across the border and brought to Baton Rouge and other cities. According to court documents, one woman says she was first smuggled across the southern border into Texas. Then, once she arrived, she was told that she would have to pay the smugglers for their services by having sex with clients of Trinde Aragua, a gang based out of Venezuela. According to the documents, the woman was told that her family would be hurt or killed if she refused to comply. The victim told investigators she was told that she was among dozens of women being trafficked and kept in stash houses in these states. She ultimately ended up here in Baton Rouge with another woman being forced into sex work. According to court documents, just days after they arrived, one victim decided to call the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office begging for help. 
Deputies went to the apartment in April where they found the two victims in this man, Albert Machado. He's described in court documents as the handler of the woman who was responsible for collecting cash and keeping the ledger book to document how much money each victim made each day and how much of their debt remained. After Man. Wow. Man. So think about it. So think about this, bro. So listen, this is, I mean, think of, I mean, this just, this, this puts you in a perspective in regards to how well DHS or even that, uh, you know, the, uh, Border Patrol security is, you know, so so well wrapped up, bro. They got it. They got it under control, but yep. they know who's coming in. They know everybody that's coming in here. They actually have a sense where they're going to land. But in a sense, look, this is exactly what happens when you just leave a border that's wide open and you have incompetency. OK, you have people that are working in our border and I'm not going to blame the patrols, but I'm going to blame the people on top, bro, that are they're just they don't care, bro. You know, what I mean, they just don't care. And now they're having these kinds of issues popping up everywhere. Think about it. Louisiana, bro. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you know, what yeah. I mean? in our own backyard, you know? Yeah. So so again, guys, again, been vindicated. We're coming with receipts, you know, go back and listen to our pod, the previous podcast. <laughs> This was all supposedly not true. Go back to now Trump talking about in his first term when he was talking and saying very bad hombres. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very bad hombres, right? Which was supposed to be racist. Talking about murderers and rapists c crossing our borders, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, again, turns out to be right. This is a local news channel. This isn't Fox News. This isn't some, this is the local news network in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, reporting on just, that's just like one case, I'm sure. You know, this is just one person. We There's thousands and thousands of people crossing the border every single day. And it makes you wonder that gang of Venezuela they're talking about. Right. Could it be MS-13? What, what, hey, remember uh, on our last, I mean, pro on our yeah. last, yeah, on our last, remember the last uh, podcast? What did I say? I think I mentioned that, uh, you know, Trump actually came out, uh, um, he came out and, and on one of his rallies up in the Bronx, uh -huh. he said, can you guys imagine this? Venezuela right now has 70% of decrease in criminalized uh, crimes. Why? Because he said they're dumping everybody out of their jail cells into our backyard into yep. the united states and is is he wrong i mean we got receipts guys <laughs> show, show us show us your receipts that this isn't true exactly you know show us you know put it on our comments put 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 an article put a put put something that that disproves what we're seeing i mean again guys we were just talking about covid and how any to anybody and here we are again now let's take the border you're racist if you want all oh, the wall, you know, the wall is racist. Yeah. Let, um, let's build your, the very let's, bad hombre's comment was racist. No, I, I would say the guy they showed in the picture right now in the article is a very bad hombre. Would you not agree? That's true. Do you disagree with that? If you disagree, put it in the comments. If you agree, put it in the comments, right? That, that's a very bad hombre. And this is two women. This is just two women. And remember, th these women, we, we've talked about what goes on in the border. We just right. talked about in the last podcast with the with the stupid Pope. That's you know, with his, his una locura comment where, where, where Texas is investigating a Catholic nonprofit, right? Because they're helping smuggle people into the United States illegally. Right. Right. So, so again, what did I say? I said they're aiding and abetting sex trafficking. This is literally... How do we know that these women, that, that this organization did not help these women get trafficked into the United States? How do we know? I mean, that, I, I want to know. I want to know if these women, if, if that organization helped these women tra be trafficked into the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, and remember in this article, the women's talking about how they're, you know, it's hard for them to find out what's going on because there's a communication you know there's a language barrier of course right there's also what do they say sometimes they're so malnutrition the malnutrition they're so malnourished yeah i mean think about how bad they and what kind of shape these women are in right you know 
And so remember, remember, Trump is the anti-woman guy, right? The the conservatives, anybody, you know, we're supposed to be anti-woman. We're not the ones passing these policies that are allowing these women to be to suffer. That's right. You know, we're trying to protect these women. Our, you know, the putting a wall and actually patrolling our border and having a immigration system that actually works and keeps bad people out and allows for good people to come in. That is what we want. We're trying to protect women. So if you're if you're open border person, then you're you're anti woman. It's just a fact, and you're mm-hmm. pro trafficking. That's true. That's what you are. That's true. It's blank. I mean, we're giving you receipts. I mean, yeah. You 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 just saw this is just one case, and right. and you know this is all being paid for by tax dollars. Those women were brought from Texas to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Their expenses were paid with your tax money. Mm-hmm. We we know this because we we it's 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 a fact. I mean, they put them on planes, they put them on buses. All of this is paid for with uh, with taxpayer dollars. The U.S. government is facilitating all that travel. That's true. That's true. And 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 then the and to hit this in the nail more some more. Yeah. You got our 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 senators, our people in Congress, bro, more worried about you know somebody else's border like ukraine right you know oh the the bad people from russia or you know what i mean like right. these are the bad people but don't worry about these don't worry what's going on in our backyard don't worry what's coming into our own don't worry about the 300 people that are dying out of fentanyl a day right don't worry about that don't yep. worry about that let's just worry about about uh about ukraine and russia right now and israel and palestine let's worry about that don't don't worry about this thing you know don't worry what what's going on in here don't worry that people, the nonprofits are making millions and billions of dollars, right? Into, yep. into, in, in, in the United States legally, okay? I mean, golly, at this point, are the nonprofits in cahoots with cartels? I don't know. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I mean, think about it. You're trying to get receipts, right? Ken Paxson just came into Texas and said, hey, I want, I'm from the Action House. Hey, I want to get receipts of what you're doing with the money. Where is it going to? Where are you m- moving these people to? I want to know. What did they say? They they pull up a, a finger, and it's not the one, not the pinky. I'll tell you that. To pa- uh-huh. to Ken Paxson and Ken Paxson, and now they want to take this information all the way to the Supreme Court. Why? Right. Why? You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Like, I mean, you can live under a rock, man. We can live under a rock, but you, come on now. Are we, do we have to be blind to see what's going on here? Oh yeah, no, it's it's. Guys, it, there's so many examples of what's going on. I mean, we just talked about, um, we just talked about the Pope last week. Yeah, you know, um, we talked about the diary with uh, with Hunt, uh, with Joe Biden's daughter, right? Talking right. about how she was uh, sexualized. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we know these things. There's just look what's going on with P Diddy with the whole you know human trafficking allegations, right? Right. I mean, it's it's all around us. And one of the things I remember. Um, I, I just remembered that uh, from the the movie Sound of Freedom. Well, it wasn't the movie Sound of Freedom, but the the guys who the producer and the writers on one of the interviews when the movie was coming out, they were talking about um, how war is they call uh, that sex traffickers call war harvest time. Mm-hmm. You re- do you remember that, Alfred? Yeah. Did, you, did you hear that interview? Yes, sir. And it makes sense when you think about it because they they were talking about in in the chaos of war it's easy for them to just snag children and people, right? Right, Because, you know, you have, you know, they what they do is they'll set up like shelters for the children. I guess it, it happened also in, um, even in natural disasters. That's true. I think in Yemen, they were talking about how in Yemen, if you guys remember, they had the, the big, um, the tsunamis, right? Mm-hmm. And so th- there was a lot of kids that were orphaned. So the human traffickers were, would set up these makeshift, um, or orphanages and people were taking kids that were finding on the street and, and, and putting them there thinking it was a legitimate orphanage, right. but it was really, it was really human traffickers. Same thing happens in war, you know, in war zones where, you know, these kids, you know, they, they just, they're found wandering in the streets, you know, mm-hmm. women, All right. you know? Um, so the, you know, it, the wars, you know, now we're kind of learning that it's not just about, making money, you know, on weapons and all that. It's also, well, not just on weapons, but also making money off, off humans. That's true. You know, it's, it's harvest time. That's true. That's true. Because guess what happens in times of war programs get activated. Right. Nonprofits, you know, they're able to wiggle the way and it's for profit. 
right? Oh, we're doing this fantastic work. You know, we're doing this to help the community. But yeah. then again, charging ten to four thousand, you know, forty five thousand dollars a month for certain families. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just profit. You know what I mean? That's just sick. And it, it, it makes them not any not any better than the price gouging that's happening with our corporations. You know what I mean? Yep. They're taking full advantage of 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 not only the population, because at the end of the day, it affects us all. You know, it affects us yeah. with working, hardworking, inflation. Why are we in this situation? Because look, the bad management of, of people. Talking about kids, bro. Um, I, I don't know if you heard this story, bro, but I was uh, 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 just a couple of, probably about a week ago, we had uh, John, uh, you know, the Pope, again, talking about the Pope. Uh, he was, he, he, got, he got called out by, you know, the, the LBGT community. And the reason why is because, you know, he, he was asked a specific question in regards to priesthood, right? You know that when you become a priest, right, you just simply, you know, there's certain, there, you know, they, they don't get married. You know what I mean? Like they don't, they don't, they don't get to. They live a life of uh, celibacy. Celibacy, and, exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they, they don't get married. They, they live a life of celibacy. They mm -hmm. don't, they don't have a family. Right. And I guess in this inner or whatever he he was asked or whatever he was asked, he just said, no, you know, this will not be open to the LBGT community. Right. Because, as you know, I don't know if you know, but the uh, uh, Episcopal, I think the church it allows that Med Methodist and uh, Methodist also is allowing certain things now. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting yeah. crazy out of control. And so he was asked that and he came back and he just said, no, I don't think that's going to be allowed for priesthood or LBGT or anybody that's gay. To, to to join some of the priesthood um you know because of again the moral right i mean you not only do you have the moral implication but you know it's something that you know come on now uh, catholics allowing this to happen i mean it'll 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 break any <laughs> any kind of yeah the the article sorry to, to yeah. interrupt i just pulled it up here real quick so it's a cnn article where it talks sure. about it says pro prophet pro Pope Francis accused of making homophobic slur in a closed door meeting. So it was a closed door meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then it goes on to say, um, that, you know, remarks in the context of propo uh, proposals from the Italian bishops to amend guidelines on candidates to seminaries, which is weird, huh, that they are amending them. You would think that would have been a guideline already <laughs> exactly right that's, that's what i mean isn't that interesting Th that's what i'm so talking. they're talking about amending their guidelines right right and these paper records which were translated from italian claimed that the pope had used an offensive noun which translates into english approximately saying i'm gonna i'm gonna say it will, will i get would i get <laughs> we'll find out would i get would i get in trouble <laughs> well i mean he said I, it quote quote faggotry <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the word was uh, to describe well, some of the some of the uh, sem seminaries. Well, in any way or another, I don't think he wants that particular option, and I think that's why he's being clear, right? I don't think that that should be <laughs> right. Something that uh, is allowed, but hey. Yeah, no faculty allowed in in the in the priesthood apparently. So the Vatican ruled in 2005 that the church cannot allow ordin ordination of men who are actively gay or have deep seated homosexual tendencies uh tendencies in 2016 francis upheld this ruling so just interesting because man that means that prior to 2005 mm -hmm. alfred they would allow it was an it was an option <laughs> i <laughs> mean I, I, I'm that's just the big story for me you know what I i'm mean, saying i'm just wondering if anybody you know I'm, that's Catholic knew about this, right? If you're Catholic, <laughs> um, does it concern you that it took until 2005 for that policy to be put in place? I mean, I mean, I guess it's no wonder they had all that issues with all these children being well, kids, was, boys I, being I, molested, I, right? I, I was gonna say, when was that? That was in the 90s, wasn't that it? That was back in the 80s and 90s. And well, now, no, no, I'm sorry, no, it was in the 90s. It was, it was in the early 2000s i believe it was it was in early 2000s and think about it 2005 it you know it, it rules out that hey they're gonna amend or they're uh, having this discussion about uh adapting to a a new guideline right or right. even consider a guideline right that allows that but up to the up to that i think he upheld and he said nope uh we're gonna keep it as that we don't want this going on i think i'm sure 
think about all the lawsuits from different people. Alfred, I mean, that, that means that that means that the church. Am I sound okay? I'm, yeah, yeah, okay. you're you're good. So that means that in 2005, which I, I'm pretty sure that's when all of these allegations started coming out with all these boys being molested by priests. Sure. So somebody huddled up. There was a meeting, and they're like, how do we solve this problem? Right? And it, it, they must have decided they need to get rid of all that faggotry that was going on in 2005, <laughs> bro. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, we need to put these amendments because we got too many gays. Uh, something had to happen. And again, this is this is something that so happened. They, so they're bl- they blamed the gays for this. Well... I mean, I, I, I mean, think about uh, amongst all these investigations, how many of these men, I mean, could seriously come out and say, hey, it's because of my preferences. Yeah, right? they investigated this. So <laughs> they must have re- they must have concluded that the majority of the people, if any, which I mean, common sense dictates that if you were a male molesting other little boys, you were likely gay. Right. OK, you had you had those tendencies. And it's just interesting that uh, up until 2005, they, they didn't have that policy. Right. And this is coming directly from the CNN article. I mean, this is not us. We're just having that discussion. It's, so you it's, can, on, it's on this article. It's on the CNN article that this mm-hmm. is something that came out. And again, uh, the, the question is, how many how many of, 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 of people that, you know, that that knew about this? I mean, they knew they had a closed door meeting and even continued to have closed door meetings about possibilities of adapting guidelines that go against the gospel goes against the bible so right. think about it for me it's more like hey again are we going to put our faith or whatever our tradition and faith in a small group of men or are we going to go back to let's look at the, what the bible said yeah and it's interesting because on the article it goes on to say in 2000 so it's talked about 2000 so since he upheld the ruling right yeah then it says two years later he told the Italian bishops not to accept gay candidates for the priesthood. So again, he has to tell them two years later. Dude, right? like I mean, but good but, lord! But the I mean, how many times have we got to repeat ourselves here? <laughs> we don't need any faggotry here yeah, in I the Catholic Church, apparently. Golly, bishops, don't bring this stuff up. Yeah. Why are you guys trying to bring all this yeah. stuff? Because of the people, because of the culture. Well, we don't follow culture, right? We follow what the Bible says. Stick to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's appelling, but guess what? He got called out on it. Yeah. And to the point, he got called out on it that, uh, you know, that roughly yeah. a couple of a uh, couple of days ago, I think they were celebrating a celebration of for the children, the world of the children. And you know what they did? They invited a person, uh, you know, from the LBGT to come and do a presentation to the children. Yeah. Bring the receipts, Alfred. Put yeah. the receipts. So here up. we go. So this this is one of the uh, so now. Uh, so we have a, a actual life site. Brain says, male drag artist dances for kids at the Vatican World of Children Day. That's right. And you guys want to look at the video from this person? His name is, uh, I believe his name is Carmine de Rosa. Okay, so let's see if we can we can play a little quick thing of what he says. Yeah, you get to see you get to see his performance. Yeah, let's see. Hopefully we can see without any issues here. Oggi mi trovo allo Stadio Olimpico di Roma per la giornata mondiale dei bambini indetta da Papa Francesco. Sono veramente emozionatissimo e non vedo l'ora di far vedere il mio spettacolo a tutti i bambini provenienti da ogni angolo del mondo. E quale spettacolo migliore se non il giro del mondo in dieci minuti? Venite con me! So, so this actually right now, I am sure that a lot of people, it's getting, it's getting noticed. When, when did we ever have that? The Vatican allows, you know, uh, some sort of repentance. And believe me, I know they're going to say, Hey, we need to honor everybody. Right. We need to respect everybody. Right. But in a, what sense, I mean, at one point, do you just say, guys, you know, you got your Pope saying, don't. Open it up for what? Because of, <laughs> because of that issue. Yeah. 
But then now you have, let's teach it to the children. Yeah. What's, <laughs> what's the incentive behind this? Why would you decide that for the National Day of Children, which I, I just did National Day of whatever, so stupid. But I don't even understand. Like, to me, there's just, there's always some weird agenda um, behind these things. They seem so innocent. But um, I'm sure we're going to find out more um, as time goes on what the real agenda behind having a National Day of Children is, World National Day of Children. But, you know, why, why have a transgender guy come out and perform? You know, um, why not a clown, a magician? I don't know. Why does why does it have to be somebody who is, believes he's a girl uh, and enjoys having sex with men? I mean, that's what we're talking about. It's sexual orientation. Why are we? There's just constantly. And again, you know that we know the church, you know, has had problems already, yeah. right? We we've already you know they've already had problems with priests molesting boys, um, and here we have them now inviting a. Uh, you know, a transgender uh, to perform in front of children on National Day of or World National Day of Children. I, I guess it just doesn't even make sense. You know, and, and going back to this article that we were reading just earlier, because you see how this kind of gives you the timeline, how how the Pope progressively is is just starting to take the church towards accepting all of this. Right. Which I mean, this was a big leap, right, having this guy come over. But um just as a reminder, uh, this was just recently too, because on the article goes on to say during his uh, pontific pontific pontificate can't say that word. The Pope has sought to offer a more welcoming approach to LGBTQ plus Catholics, saying, "Who am I to judge?" When I asked about gay priests, and uh, and has also offered the possibility that priests could offer informal blessings. For same-sex couples, <laughs> right? I mean, so, I mean, bro. Again, I I've seen this pope just you know. I it's kind of like it it, it to me, bro. It, it's kind of like this. It's like mm -hmm. you create a demand, right? You create an issue, right? Just so you can accomplish what your decision is, yeah. right? For example, let me go ahead and get three to four or five uh, news. And again, this is me wearing that you know that that tin hat again, right? Putting it on, creating an uproar just so I can allow certain things to, you know, to be put into our, our, our you know, to change our culture, you know, within within the Catholic Church. Yeah. You know, think about it. at the end of the day, what does the Bible say? You know, is this wrong? Yes or no. Is it wrong yeah. for males to sleep with males? Well, it's funny that he says, who am I to say? Would right? you, come You're the now. Pope, bro. <laughs> According to your theology, you are you are a authority over the church. You are you're supposed to be Jesus. I, I <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is the Pope is like Jesus, the representative of Jesus, the man here on earth. He is. Right. And according to Catholic theology, you know, in scripture, when when Jesus tells Peter, um, you know, that he would that he would hand them over the keys. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Their interpretation is, and what whatever uh, bound in, on earth will be bounded in heaven, right? Right. So, so when he says, "Who am I?" Well, according to your theology, you are the guy that God Jesus handed the keys over to, and gave the authority to whatever you bind here on earth will be binded in heaven. Am, am <laughs> I am I getting something wrong here? Right, You're because you know. Again, he's saying, who am I? I? I just told you who you are. So, uh, this is according to your own theology. This is the authority that you have. Right. And and so now as, if you're Catholic, when you have the priest mm -hmm. um, now allowed to bless a, a, a same sex marriage, what is blessing? What is a blessing? Mm -hmm. Right. What's the difference between a blessing and a, and a, a marriage? I mean, the marriage is a covenant, right? It's right. a promise before God. But what what I mean, a, a blessing is pretty close, mm -hmm. pretty close to basically you saying, you know, we, we want your we're blessing it where um, your approval, you're approving it. Yes. Right. You're OK with our lifestyle. You're OK right. with what we're doing. If, uh, so, uh, so priest, this, priest, pastor uh, or I mean, at this point, uh, priest, our bishops, 
uh, Pope, please don't don't look at our faults. You know, don't look at the Bible, what it says there. I shouldn't do just just bless yeah. us. Bless our lifestyle. Yeah. Bless us. Yeah. There's a term I forgot in Catholicism that if the if the Pope doesn't um, there's a certain state, I guess, if he if he if he. I guess their argument's going to be that just because it, that was in a, in a man, we'll have to look it up, Alfred. But there's we a will. there's a name, there's a name that, it, that when the Pope can make statements and declarations, mm -hmm. but doesn't mean it's bound unless it's under a certain um, context. Right, 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 um, right, right. He he's got to be sitting. I don't know. Let's just say let's see, I forgot what it is, but it's it's. I, I will it, find he's got to be sitting sitting in the throne, if you will, right? Like you know. Um, he's around his archbishops. Everybody, he's part yeah. of. A, he's he's in a council, right? It's it's something that he's writing. You know, there's even a seal in his ring, right? Yeah. That he he puts a stamp. There's a stamp, you know, that he seals the, he, it. There's so, some sort of official capacity he has yes. to be in at the moment for him to be able to to declare that so now, right? But again, if it's bound on earth, it's bound in heaven. So I, I'm just going to pose the question. Now he's he's basically said it's okay to bless same sex marriage. So does that mean it's bound in heaven? Comment and let us I mean, know. Come on, comment I, and let me know. Oh, you're this. This is uh, this is something that it's a good. It's a really good question. Now again, that's why I always go and I always gravitate back to look what happened, right? Look what happened when, look the snake said something, but what did God say? You know what I mean? At the end of the day, the snake says something. Right. Culture says something, right? Even now, we're starting to see how he comes out. I mean, you have somebody of respect, right? What you just mentioned is. This is the person that's here representing, you know, approximately six billion Catholics. You know yep. what I mean? I mean, I don't want to say that that many, but I'm just saying a bunch of people, right? right. Representing a bunch of people. And what he says, people are paying attention around yep. the world. This is Latin America. Anywhere he goes, oh, yeah. people are paying attention to the what the Pope is saying. Now, when the Pope goes rogue, right? And I'm saying the reason why I'm saying go rogue is because look at what's going on. Okay. You have a predicament. You have a situation where he's been caught saying some slurs, right? But is this intentionally? Was this part to allow this? Is this part of the plan here? Is this, I mean, is this somebody do I really want to follow based on his theology and what he's doing, his actions, right? Right. And you can even say, well, I don't judge people by their actions. Well, in this case, you know. A lot of the Catholics do judge people by character and, and their actions. Yeah, and, the, and one of the worst misquoted scriptures is, you know, when people say, you know, who am I to judge? We're right. not supposed to judge. Well, you know, finish the scripture because it goes on to say you are, you know, take take that log, right, off, right. Your, off your eye first. Of course. Right? You know, so, so in other words, saying, hey, if you're, if you're, you know, if I'm an alcoholic and I'm judging you for being alcoholic, I need to take care of my alcoholism first before I can come to you now. Right. So mm -hmm. take that log off my eye. But then it goes on to say we are to judge and judge righteously. So the Bible doesn't say you're not allowed to judge. It's just saying before you do so, get yourself right. Right. right? And when and when you do go judge, judge righteously. Right. Of course, with love, with love. You know what I mean, and Hebrews talk about it. Read it. Hebrews says, hey, when you do talk to somebody, talk to him, you know, in a sense, in love, you know, right. and even that. If there's a discussion or whatever, the person is up all rated or whatever, bring somebody with you. Bring somebody so he can be there to judge and right. witness the conversation just so it won't get awkward. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I would I mean, I would argue it's 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 his duty, his responsibility to judge. Right. Exactly. I mean, he judges conservatives all the time. Remember, he oh, he talked about that if you <laughs> if you if you carry a weapon, you're not a real a real Christian. Oh, exactly. Is, aren't you aren't you judging? So interesting how how he will judge then didn't didn't we just show him in the art in in an interview last week talk saying it's crazy yeah it's crazy what texas is doing by, by people, aren't you is aren't you interesting you didn't reply by saying well who am i to judge right or he went or 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 even that to the point <laughs> where he can say hey listen guys i don't know much about it i can't judge that right now right i can't yeah. speak on it right but what do you do he he he's flat out right. just walked into the narrative yeah it's kind of like this is what he does con consistently you know what i mean he yep. gets prosecuted he gets judged and then what happens he bends the knee yeah then he ends up having these little uh charades here where you, <laughs> come on man i mean 
come on. Like, is this really what Catholic people want to see? Yeah. I, you know, if you're a Catholic, man, I, I can't believe you're not on the phone just hammering your priest. Yeah. You know, at this point. I mean, you really need to think about what, what you're a part of. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not I'm not going to. I mean, we. It is a political <laughs> podcast. <laughs> But, but you know, but you know what? But at the I'm end trying of the to day- be careful here because I, 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 I actually have a friend who's um, one of my coworkers. So, yeah. so last week she she um, she actually watched the podcast because she doesn't really watch the podcast. So I don't know if she'll keep watching it. Shout out to Donna, <laughs> Donna Becker. Um, so she's a Catholic, and so she was telling me how uh, when I you know how I called the Pope a demon. Sure. That whole little section. Right. Just she gasped. She. You know, she's a she's a Catholic school girl. You know, she went to Catholic school. She of went course. to St. You know, the whole deal. Um, and and uh, but, but, but she said, like, you know, by the time she she understood where I was coming from, I'm like, you know, I was a little worried about that. And I get worried. Um, you know, again, you know, my dad's Catholic, my mom's Catholic, most of my family's Catholic, right? So, for you Catholics out there, you know, I'm I'm not trying to I'm not trying to hate on you guys. I'm just, you know, I mean, there's pastors out there that are that do gnarly stuff too, right? But we're you know. We're talking about the Pope, and I guess the reason why I, I'm so passionate about this is because the Pope has a lot of power and influence worldwide. That's right. That's right. You know, the reality is, you know, in in the Protestant world, um, we don't really have a, a figure mm-hmm. that's as powerful here on earth as the Pope is. Right. I mean, well, we did at one point with Billy Graham, Billy you know, Graham. And, and but great. I mean, uh, reality is, bro, Billy Graham don't no. Billy Graham did not have the, the worldwide influence mm-hmm. that the Pope ha- has had. True. Or the position. Let's just say the men. Right. Because believe me, I mean, uh, when it comes down to Pope, man, I, I John, 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 uh, John Pope, the second. Right. Great man. You know, things that he stood for. Great man. I mean, think about it and see the Catholics. Or even that ourselves, we, yeah. I I came out of a Catholic, you know. Hap- mm-hmm. Still, my family is still Catholic, you know what I mean. And so, I understand, you know, I understand that sometimes some people feel, you know, they, you know, wh- that when people that leave, you know, oh, they're just talking out of aggravation, right? They don't, li- they dislike us. No, 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 we don't. What we want you to see and open your eyes is that we need to stop following men. You yeah. know what I mean? We need to stop following men. The Catholic, I know, I I know some diehard Catholics, right? You know that are great, and they're not. You know they don't even sell. You know they don't even bend down to saints. You know they're great Catholics. You know what I mean? They're yeah. people that they're they're pro life. You know they they're pro family. They're pro. You know they're 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 pro liberty. They love liberty, right? Yeah. I mean, this is out of the political arena. Some of us came from that. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, it's the Latin mass Catholics that are more conservative. It's interesting because the right. Latin mass Catholics are the ones that are more, uh, of course, very, very similar to a Protestant Christian. Like, you know, exactly. They, they read scripture. You, when you have conversation with them, you don't even really know they're Catholic. It's kind of like, well, you're Catholic, bro. I could have sworn I'm talking to a Christian bro, that reads the Bible. Bro, you know, a hundred percent. I mean, think um, about it. Even that from that movement, there's a charismatic movement, bro. They're yeah. Catholics, mm-hmm. but now they don't do, they don't do the catechism stuff. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't uh, baptize in water yeah. their kids, right? Which it's, is interesting because the Catholic right? Church's big argument is that they're one church, but yet, right. <laughs> but yet they have their own little denominations within the church. But anyways, we, we don't want to go to that. Uh, well, my 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 point I want to make here is just that I'm passionate about this because the Pope, the the position of the Pope, historically has had a lot of influence, and as, I mean, in for all religions, there is no other religion who has a figure like that like we mentioned you know you have you did have billy graham you know and billy graham was a great man but he 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 himself did yes he he advised presidents and met with world leaders but um i don't think he he had the kind of influence and the the same platform that the pope position has had historically you know this is why they've been able to get away with this because as soon as they got francis in who's a in, you know, as a Marxist radical, um, they've been able to get away with, you know, abortion, you know, the whole abortion laws and same sex marriage, you know, and all of this wildness there, because before that you weren't having it. So we, we talked about it in the last episode more, um, don't want to beat that dead horse, but I just want to explain why, why this drives me, why I get so heated about it, because I just kind of felt like, man, we need, we need that position 
to come back to to true true uh christianity if you will mm-hmm. right to truth so yeah that, well, that's what we leave that bro talking about truth and reality bro i i don't know about you guys but I, I i mean i don't know if you guys heard about this but california bro is at it again is at it again in a sense where i don't know if you heard the story but caltrans uh is working on a pilot program right the pilot program is is to you know right now they're gonna build people right so they're gonna test out a pilot program you guys know that during the last couple of years here in california not only are people leaving california in droves right but a lot of them are purchasing electrical vehicles right so with that said with the electrical being cheaper well california especially caltrans especially the you know the the pretty much the division which helps the road they have felt a huge drag on the amount of money that has been put in put back into the division for example they made a loss in the beginning first year of two to three three billion dollars a year right now on the third year after the implementation of electrical bills and try i mean electric vehicles, car yeah. vehicles now they're starting to see that um you know they're they're going they're ramping up to four billion dollars a year is an annual growth uh, you know that they should be making out of the gas industry right and those people that have gas jugglers like myself you know um we we are already paying a tax right every time we go into the pump for example every time i go into the pump for myself i'm paying a dollar 16 you know a gallon uh you know extra in taxes in taxes Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so that's why you're seeing two dollars and something in you know in california higher than example arizona nevada or you know or even that other 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 states you know but the problem is that these people you know the lack of you know why implement it so bad now people are not buying right people are buying cars you wanted them to buy cars right yeah and now they're buying cars and now it's affecting you where in the pocket yeah and now since it's affecting you in the pocket guess what happens they're out screaming that you know that they're gonna at one point or another California road and network says it costs approximately here let me share with you the constant it says California it says here California launching a pilot right program to charge drivers for miles driven okay so what does that mean every time you drive a vehicle right in California right because of the situation with the EV market right they just took off now people are seeing that it's cheaper right I mean I can charge my vehicle for twenty three dollars a month opposed to paying 200 and some dollars to towards fuel right yeah so what's going on now they're starting to see ouch it's hurting us not only the amount of people that are leaving but now it's hurting us up to you know it could be it could come up to eight billion dollars it says right here look lauren fonda who's the spokesperson told news let me see if we have a video here oh yeah we do you guys want to check out the video yeah let's play the video let's play the video check it out Oh, sorry about the home. Let me let me make sure the the. Uh, oh, we got an ad plan. We got the ad claim. You That's know, all good. Go, well, so so I just want to remember, man. For those of you that aren't in California and are like, well, that's California politics. Understand, guys. No, it's still, we're, it, we're it the, still we're, you. We're the testing ground for all these type of policies. So once they get a once they get away with it here and it's implemented, it's gonna spread to your state. Well, okay. it's already a spreading. I think about it. The tax that you know that affects Californians also affects Nevadans and Arizonans. Yeah. So because the tax, everything that gets produced and it comes in through California or it gets out of California through California, it gets taxed. So you're already feeling some some people in Nevada are already feeling the pinch. Yeah, I'm just I'm just making the point that that you know if you're listening here to this podcast, if you're one of the 25 viewers <laughs> 81 or 81 yeah so share subscribe uh, us, all that stuff us. guys help us out but um yeah if, if you're from out of state um you know and you're like ah whatever it's gonna come to you guys you voted for yeah. him right and 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 the thing is is that you know if and, and if you're from california you know i i've mentioned this before if you remember all those commercials guys look at the roads right now Mm-hmm. Okay, they haven't done anything with this money. You have not seen anything gone down, you know, anything. I mean, you, they were scaring you that, you know, the ambulance wouldn't get to you on time if you didn't pass this That's gas right. tax because the road would be too messed up. But let's go ahead and play the video. You got it ready? 
Yep, ready. All right, let's roll. Let's do it. Tax revenue, but that's dwindling with the increase of the number of electric vehicles. And now a new pilot program aims to charge drivers for using the roads based on how much they actually drive. I would as news reporter Rob Hayes has the details. When you see crowded streets and freeways, it should come as no surprise. California has more than 30 million registered passenger vehicles, more than any other state. That's why you see so much wear continually on our roads and state highways because they're being used so much. Caltrans spokesperson Lauren Prehoda says maintaining our roadways costs around $8 billion to $9 billion a year. Mm. Most of that money coming from this. Gas taxes motorists pay each time they fill up their tanks. But with more than a million hybrid and electric cars already in California, the state is collecting less and less each year in gas tax. Californians pay about $300 a year in state gas taxes. $300 uh, a year. EVs have a $100 registration fee. That's a $200 million a year loss. Well, Caltrans thinks its California road charge program may be able to bridge that growing gap. It would do away with the taxes we pay at the pump and instead tax Californians on every mile that they drive. Ha! Caltrans' six-month pilot program will start in June. Volunteers can sign up to have their miles tracked and make some extra cash. You can earn up to $400 in incentives. Now, to track your miles, you could plug a tracking device into your car, but if that's a little too big brotherish for you, you could also just take a picture of your odometer. Everyone has different levels of comfort when we're managing our data between efficiency and privacy. And that's why it's really important to have options from low tech to high tech. Oh man, stop, stop oh, just my crazy. God, man. Bro. Right I mean, now. so so guys, they this is the thing. Sorry, Alfred, because th this one this one's <laughs> this one's got me. So so man, this this is how arrogant these people are. It's like their money. Right. You know, three hundred dollars exactly. a year for some people would say that's not a lot. Three it's three hundred dollars a year. Guys, that's a lot of money. I mean, how much does it take some people to make three hundred dollars a year? Then you have these guys talking about oh, living wages, right? We need to raise the minimum wage so that people can have a living wa living wage. Well, how how about we make? Notice they never propose making living less expensive. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Hey, how, the the. And 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 also on that thing, bro. Uh, I'm actually I got the I got the thing right here. I got the uh, the art. Uh, it says it says in that portion uh -huh. that uh, if you if you drive a vehicle, for example, they they will bill you. So here, this portion where it says depending, it says right here. Uh, I, for every a thousand miles, let's say I have a, a 2023 Honda Pilot, right? I drive 1,000 miles per month. You know, uh, let's say the road charge will be check you know between 30 to 40 dollars right think about it okay currently i pay 27 dollars every time i fill up so i'm paying 50 dollars right let's yeah. say 50 some dollars right but this year supposedly they're saying that it could bill it could be between 20 if we agree with it they bill us by mile not only are we paying and they substitute uh, since when have you seen california do this giving you money back yeah, no, and it and it's, it's, oh, man, the <laughs> guys. So we pay registration yep. already. Where does that money go? Exactly. When you pay your registration every year, which went up a couple years ago, look at how much it costs you now to register your vehicle. It's absurd the amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. Where is that money going? I can tell you where some of it's going. I know this for a fact. Some of it's going to pay for me for mental health. Exactly. What does that have to do with roads? So, so when, when car registration was sold to you, just this, do this with everything guys, they do this with, they did it with social security, which supposedly is supposed to be in a piggy bank somewhere where they're not supposed to be able to touch that money, but it's not true. And Alfred, before I forget, go on YouTube real quick and look up this, this video, just search like video of, put video of cost of firing weapons. Oh, okay. Cute. Can you, or can you cue that up? Cause, cause th this is kind of a video that I saw that. Um, that's pretty crazy. Um, uh, you said it, it'll, yeah, just like type in, uh, or just put, go on YouTube and just put in like cost of firing weapons. Okay. Um, and then there should be a video, like a short, you know, those short videos they put up. Yep. Um, and it'll have, 
um, like it, it'll be, uh, let me see if I can show this to you. Bear, bear with us here, people. This was a uh, last minute audible because I saw this. I, it, it, it looks like this. Look, Alfred. Uh -huh. Look at my phone. Look for that video. What does it look like? Oh, it looks like a boat. Yeah, it's like a boat. It's 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 the it's it's a video of of weapons being fired off a ship. Okay, gotcha. And then it has like a dollar amount on top. All right, here you got multiple. It'll be on a short. Oh, it's on a short. Okay, hold on. Let me just. Please. Yeah. So, or you look. Um, I'm there. I'm looking at the. Uh, I'm looking at old U.S. military camps. Blah, 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 but then so I put I put in video of cost oh, video. Okay. of firing weapons. Video of cost of firing weapons. Okay. And then when you search it, um, this will be worth it, guys, because it's gonna blow your mind. And then I get this. I get like a short. Let me know when you get to it. But um. Uh, the cost of war. Yeah, do you see one? It'll show, look, can you want to take my phone so you can see what it looks like and compare? Yeah, Sorry, right. The, the video on the top, the pane on the top left. Oh, got you. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, yeah, so what I what I wanted to say is that, is that you know, they, they, they so the, like your car registration, when you pay those fees, that goes to mental health. Uh, and I know this because my wife works in that department. And so their funding is reliant on, car registration. A lot of social programs are funded through that registration fees that you're paying every month here in California. So why, what, what are we paying for that we don't need? Right. Um, you know, what, what are we spending money on? What can we cut? But they won't do it. They won't cut. They're, they're not willing to tell someone that they're going to get less food stamps or that, you know, we're no longer, you know, like the Obama phones. Can we cut those? Can, can, can we not give homeless people cell phones anymore? We can't afford it. You know, why, why are we proposing charging people three, anywhere, I think that the article was saying anywhere from three to $5 per mile. And did you find it, Alfred? Yeah, I'm looking, hold on. Okay. okay. I found something similar, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it, it'll show every time they shoot a weapon and it gives you the dollar amount yeah. of what that just cost. Should I, should I just send it to that phone and then you can just play it? Uh, hold on. If I share it with you? Yeah, send it over to this number here. Or just send it to your cell phone there. Can you do it? Uh, is it a different number? Yeah, it is a different number. Okay. Yeah, just send it to yourself. Yeah, so sorry, guys. We're, I, I really want to show this because it's crazy, this video that, 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 that I want to see if we can put up because it just goes to show how, mo how money just gets, just, just, the mo just flies out the out the window man um and if you're not able to do it alfred it's it's all good bro we'll... i found somebody but someone's talking no yeah it's just a. um who, who is it who is it who is it from let me see let me see if i can get the user oh next level 22.8 yeah or can i just put my phone on the camera and just play it that way <laughs> i think it's better huh? i think it's better all right yeah. do it that way yeah let's see uh, okay so i know this is a, a little bit different guys but i saw I was I saw this today. Um, I don't know. Can we? Does that capture it right there? Let me see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this sure. this this video up. Let me see. I'm trying to. Somebody put this short up. Oh, hold on a second. Hopefully y'all can see it. But it's it's there. You see the little ticker on top. Look at those dollar amounts. Do you see it, Alvin? I can see it. Yeah. This is this is our taxpayer dollars right here. This is just one boat. I mean, look look at the numbers on there. It's on the loop. Look at the money being spent every time a weapon gets fired. It's insane, right? So I just I just wanted to show that because again, it's it, we're getting taxi death, man. We're, 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 money is not spent wisely. You know what I mean, Alfred? Yeah. So, yeah, we don't, we don't got to look for it. I wanted yeah, to show okay. up next time. Next time we'll, uh, we'll plan better, but, but yeah. And, and the other thing is, you know, like they mentioned there, how are you going to track all this? 
Well, are well, you going to let them check your miles on your car? Well, one of the things, one of the things that they're offering is like, hey, look, you're going to get a transponder. And it's almost going to be like what you do with, uh, you know, when you take the 91, right? Mm. And you go over there and you get the toll road. It's going to be like that. They're going to track you that way. But you have to pay for the transponder, okay? Not only do you have to pay for the transponder, but you would also actually still pay the three cents a mile, okay? So think, at the end of the day, for, for some of us, think about you're a driver, bro. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're a tow truck driver, right? I don't have to pay no dickening squat right now just to pay the gas. I'm already paying for it out of my pocket for my business, right? Now I need to add an extra incentive to, you know, to, to where I'm delivering my product, right? If I'm a driver. Yeah. Think about a uh, uh, Uber driver. Where do you think they're going to sell? Where you're an Uber driver, right? Who are you going to bill your three cents extra to? Me, the consumer, yeah. right? Think about it. Guess what's going to happen with the pizza, right? Delivery, the product, right? All of this, bro, what they're creating is just creating a cluster. I'm sorry for the word, but cluster gank. And, and bro, they, they really don't care. It's like <laughs> you're seeing this thing and they're a pilot for six months. We're going to build them <laughs> and we're going to see what happens. And at the end of the day, you're going to say, supposedly you're paying $27. I don't see it, right? I still got to pay the dollar eighteen or the dollar nineteen at the pump regardless. You know you what know, I mean? The way they're going to sell this, Alfred, is they're going to say, um, this is how they're going to do it. I bet you they're going to say something like, it's not fair that, they're gonna. They're they're always gonna turn this into because they they gotta convince people to do this right. So the old tactics is gonna be poor versus rich, okay. So they're gonna have to go over the sell the people on the you know. I found the, the video. Oh, you found it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, you can put it on here in a little bit, but um. Yeah. Go, go ahead and play it just in case we didn't see it. But check oh. check check out check out. Hopefully you guys can see this a little better here, but check this out, guys. Look at look at this um. Are you want to make it bigger? Let me see if I can make it bigger. Give me one. Wow, that's my. Look at Bruno. Wow, that's my budget food for the week right here. Hold my beer. Now it's on the short. It's crazy. <laughs> what was that like 11 million 11 i can't million. see the number 800 just that one shot yep right here. for every yep. every bullet it's, it's looping. 70 looping all right it's looping oh man there it's crazy go. i saw that earlier today and i was like man that's pretty slick uh, who, that person who put that Whoever i mean that there, and who knows how accurate those numbers are you know but um i mean let's just say there were half golly bro think half bro, that amount 11 million 800 on a on a tomahawk and just to be te te i'm just testing it out yeah, <laughs> I know it's a little bit off subject, but I oh, I, I, I I watched that earlier and I was I like, mean, bro, I, I got to show this video, man. That's it makes crazy. me think this is what they want, bro. But this yeah. is what they're they're hustling people. Not only are we paying high inflation, high gas, high food. Now they want to go after our, our vehicles, bro. Like, come on. They want to go after gas, even though we already pay more gas. Oh, oh yeah. So so this is how they're going to sell it. They're going to put out commercials saying that that. The rich people that can afford electric vehicles are getting away with not paying a tax. God, so me. we need to we need to go after that, and you know they need to pay their fair share. <laughs> That's what's gonna. This is how they're gonna sell it to people, and they're gonna fall for it. You're gonna fall for it again, Californians. You, this works every time, <laughs> I, and I guarantee it. Let, this is what they're You're gonna so do because how you know you got to be able to convince people, and you can't just come out, Alfred, and say, "Hey, um, yeah, we're losing revenue." Which is, you know, which is the truth. We're not, we're not able to continue to fund all but of these is, programs that we promised you. But this is all you. This was all you. You wanted people to buy electric vehicles. Yes, because you of did your such a great job feed. of convincing people that it's a problem now, right? Exactly. Yeah. So now look at it. Now it hits you. Now it's like, oh, wait a minute. Not only did we force them to pay sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. On electrical be a vehicle, a right? More expensive vehicle. They're more expensive right. vehicle, right? That's gonna help supposedly the environment, which right. it does more harm at the end of the day. Yep. And now you look you look back at the pockets and the books and you say, wait a minute, where are we? 
why are we having not a lot of money coming in to help the roads? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is you created this. This is your policies. Yeah. And now here you are again singing the I mean uh running ringing the 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 sirens, right? Saying, yep. "Hey guys, a uh, little help here," right? Yep. And how are we going to get this money out of the hard working Americans? Yep. And or in California, we're, we're, we're not giving the choice. It, 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 what is it? 2030. We have to have all electric. So, yeah. but you know, so they'll have to hustle up and while people are that, that narrative will still work. They're going to have to come out with some ad campaign, of demonizing course. people who have electric vehicles as rich, you know, they're the rich people and they're not paying their fair share. Okay. That's what's going to happen. Right. That is exactly what you're saying. Hey, listen, Exact. This is the. This is over the last three years, bro. We've been speaking facts here. We've been saying, look, guys, this is exactly what's gonna happen. And look, sure enough, right? Right. Open borders. Hey, guys, uh, we're gonna have trafficking. We're gonna have all these issues. We're gonna have gangs that are gonna come over here, right? You're gonna hear Donald Trump saying, "Hey, bad hombres," right? right. You know what I mean? And right. then here he is showing you the receipts, telling you this is what's happening, right? And look what's happening. Yep. vaccines all these issues come on it's stuff that we talk here which is want you to think something different golly you know what i mean we want you to see these things but you're right you're right isaac people are going to come back to you know california it's going to come back to the voters and guess what since a lot of them have been so much pre-programmed or reprogrammed or very easily manipulated yep. what's going to happen they're going to prove this nonsense yeah and here we are we're going to jump in another boat where we're paying a lot more and then this lady by the last name of Rana is going to get a is going to get a a, a a a bonus, right? Because she accomplished what she needed. All I needed to go in a couple of news, use the news so I can get this approved to the voters. And guess what happens? And yeah. In a year, boom, she gets yeah. quit, she gets let go. She leaves with the fat bonus. Yeah. And you and I are stuck paying the bill here. Yeah. And any and any politician that comes out, which typically is a conservative that comes out and runs for office promising you, well, we don't promise, you know, they don't promise you things. That's the, that's why it's so hard for them to get elected. But if they come out and say, you know, we're going to fight back against, you know, you know, I'm not going to pass this tax, right? Instead, we're going to cut spending so that we don't have to do this anymore. You're not going to vote for that guy. Of course You're not, not going to vote for him. The guy, the, the, the guy or, or woman that comes out to try to protect you against this kind of stuff, um, you're not going to vote for them because you're going to fall for the narrative that they are an evil, they hate poor people, and they're protecting the rich people that drive electric vehicles, and you know they don't want them to pay pay their fair share. You're you're going to fall for it, okay? This is this is what's going to happen. This is why it's so difficult for conservatives to come into office in you know in, in anywhere, but especially here in California. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, so until, people until, don't recognize. Until, no, bro. I mean, people. Pe I mean, bro. Think about it. That's why we're <laughs> we get the bad end of the stick all the time, bro. We're yep. like, dude, come on. You know, and these people, <laughs> a lot of them are still not even working, bro. They still they're still collecting checks and getting Bidenomics, you know, yep. to help in on their on their mortgage or even that to help him on their lo student loans. Come yep. on. You know what I mean? Yeah. It affects the hardworking America or the hardworking people of California. But but get again, Californians are going to stick with it and they're just going to eat it like they always do. Yeah. Right. Twenty five billion dollars that get lost in the homelessness. Right. They, get, they can't even account for. And here we are again. Eighteen billion dollars that got snuck in that wants to get snuck in on bills that are outrageous, you know, for California. And we're, you know, we're just going to take it. Yeah. You know I mean, we're just going to eat it. Yeah, because of the rest of you freaking morons, and I'm sorry to say this, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and the thing is, is that it, it you know these electric vehicles are are actually heavier than regular cars, so they actually damage the road a lot more. Right. So the, it's you know it perpetuates itself because now our roads are going to need more repairs more often as we get more electric vehicles on the road. A hundred percent, man. It's crazy. Right? It's wild, man. Hey, listen, man, we did it. An hour and 48 minutes on this conversation, bro. Yeah. But guess what, bro? This is what we're here to do, man. We love it. Unrestrained podcast. I know I know some of you are not used to the long uh, conversations. The long format. Long formats. But listen, we go straight to the point. We just talk about these topics. We, we were able just to touch on four, bro, today. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and there's a lot more to talk uh, about. Bro. $25 minimum wage. Uh, Gavin Newsom's freaking out. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, we there was, there was a lot going on, guys. And... Uh, yeah. And uh, it's 
you know, for those of you that don't live in California, um, we're trying to warn you guys, you know. Don't um, California, don't California, my Arizona or Nevada. Come on, guys. Yeah. Get on the road and just start voting for You're, people consciously. We're stuck over here. We're just echoing from California saying, don't vote for them. <laughs> yeah, don't support those policies because we're the proving ground for this stuff. And as soon as it's successful here, it gets rolled out nation, nationwide. So that's what you they know. Ho hopefully that helps you kind of identify some of the policies once they come your way because they will come up on your on your ballot. It will get proposed in your state. Um, and yeah, we're just trying to we're just trying to give you guys a heads up. You know, awesome. Yes, man. Hey, hey, guys. Well, thank you so much, yep. man, for sticking with us. I, we appreciate your time, man. Uh, thank you for 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 just handling the two hours here. But listen, we'll wait for you guys every Tuesdays. Uh, you know, we're 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 doing this. This actually gets launched every Wednesdays, right? Actually, it gets launched every Tuesdays right after we're done, bro. We're like, boom, we get it out there, right? Yep. Um, because we want to get the get it out to you as soon as possible. But stick with us every Tuesdays at seven p.m. If you missed the pre-recorded. Don't worry. Continue to stay in tune with us. And we're just bringing you all this st stuff that probably you heard it or you've seen it and you're constantly want to talk about it. Well, join us. We're willing to come in. Leave us a message so we know we're reaching the right crowd. And, you know, at least we're not, you know, speaking to, you know, <laughs> empty rooms. <Yep. laughs> so uh, post your message. Let us know you're there just so we know. But at the same time, man, we'll see you here every Tuesday, 7 p.m., man. Thank you so much, Isaac, for coming along, bro. Staying, right, sticking man. with us. We'll see each other next week. And thank you and God bless you. All right. Take care.